they're a match made in kumasatra kuma i don't even know what it's called in what is that what is that word kum, kumasatra you just said karma sutra like teresa says ingredients is. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit of teresa literally filled my body as i was defending her man virtual reality hi i'm danny and i'm evan and like louis we are just as obsessed with Bravo as he is allegedly obsessed with sex. Allegedly, Margaret might have something else to say. <laughs> New Jersey like came to Schley, as Shea Coulee would say, like it is so freaking good. I am just like on the edge of my seat, every single scene, they, they're really delivering. And this movie stuff is just beyond. It's so good. Cause what I love, it's kind of like the buffet of every other reality show. Cause it's like, they get wasted just constantly. They get loud constantly and fight constantly. They have hot mic moments and they have family drama. It's just nonstop. What were you feeling when Teresa did her walk away? Where are you going? I'm leaving. Where the guys and guys are the devil. Teresa, oh. leave. Why are you still filming? I mean, I um, I expected it because I, you know, as Melissa Gorga would tell you, Teresa does not like to uh, face conflict when her feet are, you know, put to the fire. She is, she's not, she's not having it. She's not gonna let those tootsies burn. She's gonna <laughs> run away. She's gonna speed off in her mad- Big Range Rover! Which was beautiful, by the way. That just took the scene from like a 10 to a 100, the matte pink Range Rover, stunning. They were talking all about like the new things about him, like kind of being like, the love addict, the stuff with the exes, even some stuff with his work, which is weird because Frank Catania Jr. works with him. Ah! But what do you think he was like? Because he was like so freaking out with Teresa on the phone. If it were me, I think I would be most concerned about the sex obsessed allegations from previous relationships. Like that's a major red flag, but I don't know. And Evan, here's why I am so confused because these people say they are Teresa's friends and they love her and they have to remember, Teresa loves her sex just as much as it seems Louie does. They are both so sex obsessed. So I don't really understand like, is it, are they afraid that he's gonna cheat? Are they just mad at her for finding this new guy? Or are they, I kind of wonder, are they all just so protective of her after the stuff with her? Juicy Joe, that they just like don't want her to be with anybody. Like, I have no clue. Yeah, I mean, look, they could be protective, but I think they all just need to calm down because if, if you know Teresa and you saw the sex obsessed headline about Louie, you don't say, girl, I'm worried about you. You say, girl, congratulations. Yeah. Finally, someone to keep up with you, someone to, to drink a pineapple margarita with you, someone who can handle the uh, apparently 20 times a day that, that you crave. You know, they're, it's like they're a match made in Kumasatra. I don't even know what it's called. In, what is that? What is that word? Kumasatra? I, I feel like Teresa. Oh. I don't. I, <laughs> you do uh, some. You just said Karma Sutra like Teresa says ingredients is. <laughs> you know what? She found her 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 Kumasatra soulmate. So congratulations, <laughs> Teresa. Like the spirit of Teresa literally filled my body as I was defending her man. Poor poor Trey. And I mean, I'm not gonna say poor Jenny, because I don't care about her anymore, but she's denying throwing a glass at Mary when I I think we saw it happen. So I don't know how she's denying it, but she is. She well, I I, I think that it, it it's very convenient for her that the glass didn't hit Mary. So she's just telling us all that she made her aim. She was throwing it at the floor. But I mean, we we all saw the video, babe. You literally launched it at Mary. You didn't quite make it. it. It was a hit and a big old miss. I mean, literally it made no impact. Uh, the only impact it did make was on the floor. Mary didn't care. No one on the cast seemed to care. Like it, it was the most anticlimactic glass throw ever. So but there, there was an intention to hurt Mary. And it's, it's just a little weird after what we know, what we know about Jenny. It's not a good look. And now she's trying to save herself, but there is no saving yourself, Jenny. I'm sorry. No. I know it's a weird hell of dying because all it is, I'm like, okay, you're just, you just need to work on your upper arm strength, which is shocking to me because you said you have broken your husband's ribs. So I assumed she would, you know, she knows what she's doing with uh, her arms and her body, but I guess this one just kind of missed the mark. Maybe she had too much Vita or the Vita is just slippery with its smoothness. Don't worry, Lisa, I said it's smooth. So don't get mad at us about that. All right, and speaking of Salt Lake, uh, this Sunday, part one of the reunion for them is happening. And I am so excited. Evan, what do you hope happens? I am shaking in my ski boots. I hope I hope a lot happens. I hope that we get some more clarity around Lisa and Meredith. I hope that Andy Cohen grills Jen Shaw like he grilled Erica Jane. Yes. So I'm just excited to see Meredith's 
real raw reaction to Lisa's repugnant behavior. And like, if Meredith can't handle the word twink, I don't think she can handle the 900 words that were blurred out from Lisa Barlow's mouth about her and her family, which is her biggest uh, issue. So I feel she's gonna be mad and I feel she's gonna have Seth join her and be mad at Lisa too. Yeah, what are you hoping happens on the Shaw front? I mean, it's so bad because like Jen Shaw has had an amazing season, despite the fact that she is um, facing court uh, in the next two weeks. So I'm hoping she's going to be my main hope because I know her trial is in March. So maybe in part two or part three, she's live tweeting it while on the stand. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I can imagine. It's going to be, she's like, guys, tough. don't show Salt Lake City clips, but uh, tonight at nine, I am on it. So I need to just do some promo for it. <laughs> and speaking of people who are no longer on Housewives shows, we talk about Bethany a lot and we talk about her, her, she has more allergic reactions than I think any other person I know. And it is insane, but I also feel bad for her that she always has to deal with it because this new one seemed pretty next level. For those of you that have severe food allergies, please make sure to always have your EpiPen and antihistamine with you. I mean, I never want anyone to suffer a, a, a traumatizing allergic reaction, but something's always happening. I like Something's I'm, always I'm, happening. I also think this men, this restaurant should call them now traumatizers, a trauma appetizer. We're like, here you go. And you just see what happens. For those who missed it, Bethany Frankel took her daughter out to eat and she ordered some vegetable spring rolls, but there was some fish in it that she is apparently deathly allergic to. And the experience left her daughter traumatized. And of course she made a TikTok about it. And it is the latest uh, social media happening in the drama that is Bethany Frankel's online life. I wonder if she's just like spitballing ideas for like a, a scripted series sometimes. Cause like, there's just too much is always happening with Bethany. Like, I, if you want to let us know, go back on Housewives. <laughs> That's what we'll get. That's, That's what we want to know more. That's medium than Twitter be. Cause now she's just being like the, like uh, on Facebook, like this happened at this restaurant. And we're like, okay, I don't. <laughs> Leave a Yelp review like a human. I don't like, I don't need to see that. Where she was like, this is a PSA for people with allergies. It's like, okay, uh, like I understand where her head started, but now we're just talking about the spring roll you ate. Like I want spring rolls now. That was the only side effect for me, but I know it's a very like weird thing that she always clings to. And she always inserts herself like an EpiPen into every situation. Like, did you see her now talking about Kanye getting in trouble, calling him a genius after she like, has ranted about his divorce issues for the past three weeks on her podcast. It makes no sense. Well, I don't know if you saw, but she sort of responded to all her Kanye oh. backlash in a very cringy TikTok. If you want to stop me, you're going to have to fucking kill me. Like, uh, first of all, learn how learn how to lip sync. You're, you're <laughs> nowhere near the words be. If, she, if you're going to be on TikTok like that all the time and you want to make this a, a part of your skinny girl empire, skinny girl TikTok, you want to make this part of your brand, you have to learn how to lip sync. I will not accept poor lip syncing on TikTok, Bethany. You, she is so great in every other facet of her life. She's an amazing businesswoman, an amazing mother. She like is great in the interview chair on yeah. House but a lip syncer, she is not. So that is a skill that she needs to work on. All right, so now we want to know from you all, do you cringe or crave these Bravo celebrities on TikTok? I personally am mainly a cringer. Evan, how about you? I, I, I cringe, but I do crave a few of them. I crave Kelly Ben Simone's TikTok content. I've got to say, so you guys better check that out. But we want to know, what do you think of these Bravo celebrities on TikTok? Yeah or nay?